How different is Iron Man from comics to screen? Tony Stark's Iron Man has appeared in thousands of Marvel comics, so there's a significant amount of lore surrounding this character. On the big screen, we've seen the character played by Robert Downey Jr. in many of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, including three solo films. So let's find out how different the character is in the comics to his appearances in those films. Okay, let's do this right. Anthony Edward Stark, aka Iron Man, made his first appearance in 1963's Tales of Suspense issue 39, written and illustrated by Stan Lee, Larry Lieber, Don Heck, and Jack Kirby. In the issue, Tony visits the country of Vietnam to oversee a military demonstration of his Stark Industries technology, but in the process trips on a booby trap and is captured by the terrorist leader, Wong Shu. He orders Tony to use his intelligence to create powerful weapons for him, but the booby trap's explosion has caused shrapnel to lodge in Stark's chest, giving him only a week to live. Tony agrees to build a weapon, but he and another captive, Professor Ho Yinsen, secretly build a weapon for themselves to escape. More specifically, an electric powered suit of armor with a chest plate to keep Stark's heart beating. As Tony's being bolted into the suit, Wong Shu arrives to check on the prisoners, so Yinsen creates a distraction, giving Stark the time needed to fully charge the armor so he can escape. The distraction saves Tony's life, but costs Yinsen's his. So as Stark escapes, he uses his offensive weapons built into the suit to destroy the village and seemingly kill Wong Shu. The comic is very similar to what we see in the first Iron Man movie, from the shrapnel being lodged in Tony's chest, to building a grey hulking suit with Yinsen. The main difference between this portion of Tony Stark's origin from page to screen is that it took place in Vietnam, rather than Afghanistan in the movie. However, as the timeline works differently in the comics and is always changing, in 2004, the country of Iron Man's origin was changed to Afghanistan. Then, post the release of the film, the area which Tony and Yinsen were working in was a cave. With a box of scraps! Some other differences is that Wong Shu was replaced with another group that called themselves the Ten Rings, led by Raza. Also, the device stopping the shrapnel from entering Tony's heart is way smaller in the movie and referred to as an arc reactor. It smells! Yeah, it does. Now let's talk about the rest of Tony Stark's origin. Upon returning to the United States, Tony upgraded the chest plate keeping him alive so it could be worn under everyday clothing. Despite the Iron Man suit only being made to escape captivity, he continued to don the suit to ward off criminals that threatened his company, before eventually using his technology to defend America and the world from threats. This led to him living a double life as being the CEO of a major company, and as a superhero. But Tony wanted to hide his identity, so pretended that Iron Man was his bodyguard. Over the years, Tony developed the Iron Man suit and even underwent a heart transplant so he no longer required to wear the metallic chest plate. Again, there are a lot of similarities from page to screen, but Stark's dual identity remained secret for a very long time in the comics, only publicly revealing it in 2002's Iron Man issue 400, whereas the movie did it at a press conference at the end of the first film. I am Iron Man. As it is for most great characters, Tony Stark has a complex personality. Like in the movies, Tony was initially self-centered, only really caring about wealth, fame, and short-term relationships. It wasn't until he was captured by the terrorists and became Iron Man that he learned to become a better person and use his success for good to make the world a better place. However, this, at times, has come at the cost of morally questionable methods, including fighting other heroes who disagree with him. Reed Richards has even described Stark as a future man trapped in the now. Despite occasionally having questionable methods to achieve world peace, he's seen as a good person at heart, who will only resort to killing in an extreme circumstance. Other characteristics about the character that carry over from page to screen is the fact that he's one of the most intelligent people in the Marvel Universe, one of the richest people in the Marvel Universe, sometimes, is a master engineer, capable of fixing any sort of machinery, and is well respected in the business world, having built up many multi-dollar do companies over the years. While not specifically stated in the movies, Tony can fluently speak English, Japanese, Chinese Mandarin, Spanish, French, Russian, and Korean, among others. A trait that's always plagued Tony Stark is his issue with alcoholism. It's a trait inherited partly due to his father having it, and partly due to the abuse he received from him. Tony had his first drink as a young child when his inebriated father, Howard, forcibly gave it to him. This then led to him frequently drinking at age 15 before becoming an alcoholic as an adult, often working while drunk. The dangerous drinking behavior has been witnessed by many, but Butler and friend Edwin Jarvis got the assistance of Bethany Cable to help Tony fight his alcoholism for the first time. 
Unfortunately, he's had relapses, one of which meant that Rhodey had to take over as Iron Man. It's even gotten so bad at stages that Stark became homeless and kicked off the Avengers, but his friends are always there to help him in these situations. This struggle is something that's briefly touched on in the movies, particularly in Iron Man 2. Tony, how do you go to the bathroom in the suit? Just like that. Now, what's Tony Stark's connection to other characters? Tony was born to parents Amanda Armstrong and Jude, surname unknown, but was raised by adoptive parents Howard and Maria Stark. Amanda and Jude were S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, with Jude being a secret Hydra double agent. The two formed a relationship, then two years later, Amanda fell pregnant. But upon learning that Jude sold out S.H.I.E.L.D. agents to Hydra, she killed him. Thinking her life was too dangerous to parent a child, Amanda asked S.H.I.E.L.D. to ensure her child would go to a safe and happy home, but was denied the request, instead being left in an orphanage in Sofia, Bulgaria after the child's birth. Howard Stark learnt of this and adopted the baby with Maria, who was no longer able to birth a child of her own, and upon the request of Amanda, kept the name of Anthony for the child. In the MCU, Tony is the biological child of Howard and Maria, and the other difference is that he was born in Bulgaria in the comics, but the US in the movies. Similar to the movies, Tony had a strained relationship with his father in the comics, but in the MCU, it was more due to him always working, rather than being an abusive drunk. Tony did lose his parents in a car crash in both mediums, but there was slightly more to the crash in the MCU, with it being revealed that Bucky Barnes, brainwashed as the Winter Soldier, was behind their deaths. He killed my mom. As for the characters Tony has had a romantic relationship with, to name a few, he's been with Natasha Romanoff, Maria Hill, and Jennifer Walters in the comics. While he's also dated Pepper Potts in the comics, they never got married, like in the movies. Tony did, however, briefly marry Emma Frost for the benefit of a mission. Tony doesn't have any children in the comics, but does have a daughter with Pepper in the MCU named Morgan, which is the same name as Tony's cousin in the books. There is also no mention of Stark having any siblings in the movies, but Arno Stark is the name of his brother in the comics. He was the firstborn child to Maria and Howard Stark, who too has worn an Iron Man suit, most notably one with big gears on his shoulders. He has also, however, been an antagonist. Other notable characters in Tony's life include his chauffeur and bodyguard Happy Hogan and James Rhodes, both who have a similar relationship with Tony in the comics and movies. He's also been a mentor figure to the next generation of an armored hero in Riri Williams's Ironheart. While the character has appeared on screen, this mentorship hasn't been brought over. Stark's had a few assistants over the years, including Pepper Potts, Mary Jane Watson, and Edwin Jarvis, who also acts as the Avengers butler. However, while Jarvis is a physical person in the comics, he's just another rather very intelligent system in the movies. Another AI who's in the comics and movies is Friday. One operating system that does not appear in the movies is Heuristically Operative Matrix Emulation Rostrum, or Homer. So the more you struggle, the more this is going to hurt. Tony Stark has been a part of many teams in the comics, most notably Guardians of the Galaxy and being a founding member of both the Avengers and the Illuminati. While we haven't seen him a part of the Illuminati in the movies, he was a co-founding member of the Avengers and sort of, but not really a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy in Infinity War and Endgame, he at least teamed up with some of the members. As for members within these groups, he's been closer with some than others, including Peter Parker, Steve Rogers and Bruce Banner, and had a falling out with many, including Peter Parker, Steve Rogers, and Bruce Banner, but almost always manages to make up. Characters he doesn't really make up with are his villains, a lot of whom have tried to replicate the Iron Man technology for themselves and use it for evil motives, most notably Iron Monger, Justin Hammer, and Whiplash, three characters he's fought in both the comics and movies. As a member of the Avengers, Tony has also come face to face with Loki, Ultron, and Thanos on page and screen, and the other notable villains he's come up against in the comics but not yet on screen include Crimson Dynamo, Madame Mask, Ghost, Titanium Man, and his first major battle against Gigantus, as opposed to Iron Monger in the movies. Time to rid the world of weapons! You gave it its best one ever! Physically speaking, the facial hair look wasn't always a goatee beard and mustache, but has often had at least a mustache in the comics. As for the suits, well, there have been many, but some of the ones that are in both the comics and movies include the Mark I, the Mark III, the Mark V, Hulkbuster, plus many, many more that have appeared in either just the comics, just the movies, or both. Some of these suits are specific for different situations, but most give Tony the ability to fly, increase his strength, shield himself against attacks, and attack enemies with offensive weapons, most notably, repulsor rays. 
Even out of the suit, Tony has expert combat training, which he uses to defend himself in both the comics and movies. When not traveling around in the Iron Man suit, he'll often get around in one of his many sport or vintage cars. Like most characters in the Marvel Universe, there are a multitude of variants and different characters who have worn the suit and have taken on the name Iron Man. For example, Rhodey, Happy Hogan, and even Dr. Victor Von Doom. As for comic to movie adaptations of stories that Tony Stark's Iron Man has been a part of, I've already spoken about his origin, but how different are some of the other story arcs? Iron Man 2 takes inspiration from the Demon in a Bottle arc, which I covered earlier, Tales of Suspense issue 97, which is the first appearance of Whiplash, but the movie is also loosely inspired by the Armor Wars adventure, where business rival Justin Hammer hired the Spy Master to steal Tony Stark's Iron Man technology, which he then sold to various criminals which the hero fought. Iron Man 3 is based off the extremist story arc and interactions with the Mandarin, but again are largely different. Most notably, none of the characters who claim to be the Mandarin in the movies are the Mandarin in the comics. Captain America Civil War takes a lot from the Civil War comic, including Tony Stark being the lead supporter of the Registration Act after believing it's the only way to protect the public and the heroes themselves. Something that doesn't carry over in that movie is that once Team Iron Man has quote unquote won the battle, Stark was appointed Director of S.H.I.E.L.D. As for the Avengers movies, the first film is loosely based on both Avengers number one and the Ultimates. In Age of Ultron, Tony Stark and Bruce Banner create Ultron, but that is not something either of them are involved in in the comics. Instead, that character is created by Hank Pym. Infinity War and Endgame are inspired by the Infinity Saga event in the comics, but Tony's story largely differs. In the comics, while he is involved in the battle against Thanos, he's not a main character. Stark also doesn't die at the end like he does in Endgame. He has seemingly been dead in the comics before, but no comic death is ever permanent. Some other notable comic arcs Tony's been a part of include, but not limited to, Secret Invasion, where the Skrulls infiltrate Earth, leading to Tony losing his position as Director of S.H.I.E.L.D., Dark Reign, which takes place after Secret Invasion, where Norman Osborn takes control of S.H.I.E.L.D., building a team of Dark Avengers who hunt Tony down. He's a part of Avengers vs. X-Men, where the Avengers vs. the X-Men, and is also in Civil War 2, where Tony Stark once again leads a side of divided heroes when a new Inhuman named Ulysses is found to have the power to predict the future. Stark's position is that he shouldn't be used, instead letting nature take its course. Basically, if there's a major event in the comics, you better believe Tony Stark was a part of it. I'm sorry, Earth is closed today. Tony Stark's Iron Man is one of Marvel's most iconic and beloved characters. Even though we've seen the character put to screen in many movies, he's had significantly more stories told in the comics. And I've just spoken about his main 616 appearance. There are all sorts of variants of this character across the multiverse. Despite this, the movies and Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal capture the essence of the character of Iron Man and Tony Stark very well. Some would even consider this on-screen portrayal one of the most iconic characters of all time. So it would be difficult to see anyone else play the character in the future. I am Iron Man. Hey, you want to hear some fun facts about Iron Man? Yes, please. Here are some fun facts about Iron Man. The Iron Man theme from the 1966 animated series is played in the first Iron Man movie, both as part of the soundtrack and as Rhodey's ringtone. Tony Stark makes you feel... <laughs> the quote... I am Iron Man was improvised by Robert Downey Jr. at the end of the first Iron Man movie. Producer Kevin Feige approved of this decision in the final edit of the movie, leading to the idea of moving away from secret identities in the MCU, which was common in the comics. Most of the food that Tony Stark ate in the movies was never in the script. It was often improvised because Robert would just walk around with snacks. Blueberry? The line, I love you 3000, was added in Avengers Endgame because this is something one of Robert's kids once said to him. If you ever need a blood donor, Tony Stark is A positive. In a She-Hulk comic, someone told Tony that he's more attractive than Robert Downey Jr., a comment which Stark agreed with. Tony Stark was the first person of Earth to wield the Infinity Gauntlet. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Iron Man movie or comic arc is. And don't forget to absolutely obliterate that like, subscribe, and share button. I'm just kidding. Only do it with enough force that it registers. I don't want any of you breaking whatever device you're watching this on.